Today we're going to talk about solar panels and how much solar do you need. And that's going to come down to three different factors that you'll have to answer these questions. Now there's a ton of videos out there to describe you know, how much your power draw is and how big your battery bank is to how much supposed solar you need to recharge that battery bank. And while those math calculations are really great to do, and you should certainly do them, I'll tell you from a practical aspect how much solar uh, you should probably have depending on how you want to use it. So the number one factor with how much solar you're going to need is, is it your only power source? So if it's your only power source and you don't have any sort of backup to charge from your vehicle or charge from a generator or you're not planning on plugging in anywhere, you're going to need a different amount of solar than those that are just using it as an additional power source. Secondly is when you're going to use it. If you're going to be using your camper or your solar in the middle of winter time or in adverse weather throughout the year, you're going to need a different amount of solar than those that are only traveling in the pretty months during the summertime. And number three, where you park. So that's a huge factor. If you want to park out in the main sun and get scorched all the time, then that's gonna be much different than if you're wanting to park underneath some trees where you're only gonna have partial sunlight throughout the day. Also, with that is how you want to deal with your solar panels. So are you wanting to tip your solar panels or not tip your solar panels? So that's gonna kind of play into the where you park type of scenario. So in answer to that question, here's how we use our solar and the reason we have 800 watts of solar. So first of all, we use our solar basically to power everything in here. We do have an alternate power source of the alternator from the truck, which we realistically rarely use, except for in cases where we want to charge very quickly. For the most part, we just use the solar panels. So here's what we found is that in the winter time, especially your daylight hours and certainly your sun hours are a lot shorter, but also the sun angle, instead of being really direct above, is gonna be at a really steep angle. So if you could get away during the summertime with 400 watts of solar in the winter time, 800 watts is gonna be a lot easier to live with without having to tip the panels or do special arrangements with where you park. So for us, we like to not have to think about the battery charge or where we park. So one of the huge advantages of running a higher amount of solar is that you don't have to think about it so much. So one way of thinking about that when you do your calculations is if you figure out your power consumption and you think that you can get away with 400 watts of solar, if you double that number, then that's gonna allow you to function during the winter time for the most part with exception of snow covering your panels and your roof. So the other factor is with tipping your panels or parking under partial shade. And that's gonna be the same thing. You, you could probably get away with half as much solar with you know, facilitating it where you're following the sun, you're tipping your panels, you're parking in certain ways. And if you wanna do that, that's great, but that's just a different level of commitment to facilitating your power needs. We're not interested in that, so for us, we could uh, get away with 400 watts if we did that. 800 watts is where we don't have to think about it. The other factor is just weather and with the bad days and whatnot. So if you have cloud cover, it's amazing how many times we'll be out someplace and uh, and it, our solar output will get cut in half or a third. But even in the winter time, and I'll show you some video clips with some different scenarios. This is nine o'clock in the morning and we are in April, and you can see of the 800 watts of solar, we are getting about 330 watts, and that's because it's in the morning, and also, we've got some trees outside. This is a cloud-covered day, mid-afternoon. Our truck is faced towards the sun, no tree cover, and you can see we're only getting 122 watts of solar out of the 800 watts on the roof. Morning at 30%. We have partial cloud cover. The most we've seen out of the 800 watts is 650, and it was just briefly. But as you can see, we're at 300 now. Essentially, we don't have enough solar, or we rarely get 100% of our solar um, 
most of the time. So we have 800 watts of solar. It could produce around 50 amps of power. Um, typically, especially in the wintertime, we're never going to see over 400 watts, and that's just how it is. So, um, you know, it's just it's just how it works with winter being the lower sun angle and so forth. So having the extra panels makes a huge difference with that. So the basic of what I would conclude with how much solar you should have is really try if you want to not have to think about it and you want to more or less use it as a primary power source is to put as much solar on your roof as physically will allow. I think the really nice number to hit is somewhere around 800 to 1000 watts and that's if you're not going to be running anything crazy. Now if you're going to be running stuff, try to run an air conditioner or any sort of really high power use type item, you're going to need a lot more solar. 1000 watts is going to be a bare minimum and you're probably going to have to be tipping your panels to even have a shot at that. But realistically you're going to probably want more like a 2000 watt type number. For people like us who we don't even have a power inverter but we use the power for our, our compressor refrigerator, for our laptops, for all the lights, the fans, the heater, you know, all the basic stuff of running this thing, the water pump. Um, 800 watts of solar is a really nice number to have. We could probably be okay most of the time with 600 watts and it's completely overkill in the summertime, but in the wintertime, it's definitely gonna be the right number to have is uh, getting it up into that higher six eight hundred type of number for us. So, if you're okay with tipping panels, you know, moving your parking around and and really monitoring that stuff all the time, you can have a lot less solar. Um, and if you're only in the summertime, you can use a lot less solar or have a lot less solar. Um, if you want to use it year round, never really think about it. Park under trees, and still have your batteries return to full. Then you're gonna want to more or less go two times the amount of solar that you need in the summertime. So that would be a good kind of rule of thumb with uh, how much solar that you should need or, or use. Our previous camper, our Winnebago View, had about 930 watts of solar and that was fantastic. Uh, but we did have issues in the wintertime on it one uh, trip where we parked it essentially for about a week and it was under partial tree cover and it was in the winter time and it was cloudy and every day we noticed that the charge was just slowly dropping so you know one day it went up to 90 percent was the top and the next day it was 85 the top and you know before long it was uh, completely dead and a lot of that has to do with running the AGM style batteries in our previous camper versus the lithium and the lithium charge a lot faster so you can actually have a little less solar and have it actually function more, um, just more functional. So anyways, if you have any questions about how much solar and if you wanna share how much solar you have and how that has worked for you and if your experience has been different than ours, feel free to post up in the comments. If you have any thoughts otherwise, be sure to post up. Otherwise, appreciate you guys watching. We'll check back with you guys here before too long and uh, hit the like button. We appreciate it. Talk to you later.